Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to one more edition of Coffee with Tim. Coffee with Tim. This morning on Coffee with Tim, we'll be talking about, I'm not sure what, it might be God's plan and, and your identity. Uh, a little update about our life. Uh, we have big changes coming. I'm excited about that. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, sit back, watch and listen, or just do something and listen. But thank you for joining me on Coffee with Tim. Okay, for Christmas, uh, my wife got me some video editing software. I've been playing with the tutorials and practicing some stuff. And I got big ideas on how to improve this video. Just simple things like a, a, like a nice video intro. Uh, just all kinds of things. I can actually put scripture on the screen. I don't think I'll have it done for tomorrow. Today's Thursday and it's uh, Friday video. But uh, I'm learning. I'm getting close. So look forward to, please look forward to some upgraded uh, video stuff coming. I'm excited about that. Hopefully the content will keep up with the video performance. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, this morning I've had COVID and I, I've been sick and, and today's the first, second day. I felt pretty good yesterday. I'm a little bit better today. My cough's mostly gone. My wife's at home. She, I give it to her. She's right in the worst of it right now. She's coughing her lungs out. It doesn't feel good at all. She's so tired. So pray, pray for us, pray for my wife, she get better. Uh, I'm over here at this little park in Central Point, Oregon. I've been driving by this park, and it's probably not the best place. There's the gal over here vacuuming her car. Kids are out of school. As the kids run around. The garbage guy just drove by making noise. The post office, ironically, is across the street. And next to that is my chiropractor's office and my doctor's office. I've been seeing them. Uh, working on my diabetes. I got my medication started again. I got a new diet I'm supposed to be starting. Already I've seen improvements in my my, my feeling. My, my body's not acting the same way. I'm feeling much better and I see progress. Continuing to lose weight and so we're excited about that. Pray for me on that as the, as the uh, changes in my diet and, and lifestyle would affect positively on my blood sugar and my health. Right? Praise God. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for God to step up. And I was hoping he'd do it directly, but it, apparently I have some work to do for now, so I'll do my part, trusting him to do his part. All right? So, uh, update on the coach real quick. We, we've we been uh, working on that. We finally got some of the carpet out uh, and ready to install, almost ready to completely do it. We're to the point where we're actually shopping for flooring and we explored lots of options uh, mom and law came over and, and gave us some good advice and, and so we're really narrowing down our choices on what to do and we're excited about that christmas and covid have kind of slowed us down but we're getting closer to, to actually purchasing and installing the new flooring made an appointment we're going to lord willing we're headed down to march in, into southern cal to get the rest of the rig repaired so uh, we'll be on the road uh, in a couple months, but we're making progress. Light at the end of the tunnel. We're no longer going to be stagnant and stuck with moss. It's been a great time to, to recuperate, but we're going to be getting ready to go. All right. So I don't really have a spiritual awesome message today. I've been reflecting a lot about how far I've come, what God's been doing in my life. Re checking into who I really am. There's been so many changes, and remembering the stages of, of change God's taken me through in my life. And, and it's encouraging in one sense, because you look back, and you see you've been a long way. You know, there's been a lot of change. You're not who you used to be. But then sometimes you look ahead. And like I was reading Job, and Job is one chapter of Job, I think it's 30, 31, or whatever. He's explaining his... His claim to being righteous. I'm looking at that dude. I'm like, I'm not in the same league with this guy. I am embarrassed and ashamed and convicted of how unholy I am. I look at what Job was, was like. And yet he needed to save her just as much as me. So I have so far to go. And yet I've come so far. And God is awesome. He continues to be at work in my life. So one thing I've been looking at, right? God has the plan. There's a plan from eternity past to eternity future. I've, I've mentioned this in a couple of videos. 
And I just want to touch, touch on that real quick. What God wants, in my understanding at this point in time, is that God wants a family of human beings that were created in his image, got wrecked, that he restored, he adopts, he puts his life into them as a born again, new life. And they're brothers and sisters to his own son, Jesus Christ, joint heirs. And we live in eternity together as a big family, doing the things that God likes to do. And, it's, and we're made for that, and we're fully blessed and fulfilled in that relationship and in that activity. There's no more sin. There's no more death. Uh, everything is known. There's no more mystery, nothing hidden. Uh, he's got ages and ages to come that we don't even know what they're about. But we know that we will be a family with God, with Jesus Christ as our big brother. And that's what he wants, people who are willingly... Uh, returning the love to God that he gives unto us. In fact, in Romans 8:28, it says that he has predestined us. In other words, before he even we were even existing, he had a destiny for those who would respond to the gospel that we should be conformed to the image of his son. That is God's program. That is God's plan. He is going to accomplish it for those who are willing to let him do that to them. You have to submit to that. You have to embrace that program. It's awesome. It's awesome to know that, first off, that there's a destiny that's beyond my ability to achieve on my own, that's promised by God. Uh, scripture says that he that began a good work in you will complete it. And that good work is to conform you to the image of the Son. And here's the cool thing. He made us, man was made, let us make man in our image, is what he says. We were originally man, Adam and Eve, in God's image. That image was ruined by sin in the fall of man when they rebelled, stopped trusting God, disobeyed God. And they were twisted. They were twisted. And we are all born twisted. You don't have to look at the world very far to see the twist that's in man. You don't have to look at yourself very far to see the twist that's in man. And yet God's promise is to conform us to the image of his son. You know what? That's what we were supposed to be in the beginning. It's a restoration. It's like if you, Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. You see the Father. I, do what, I say what he says. I do what I see him do. You see me, you see the Father. And that's our destiny. That's a rest restoration to the original plan. Uh, plan interrupt us. Plan correct us by Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. And that's a secure deal. I don't have to. I can't earn it. I can't achieve it on my own. It's a promise of God that he is going to do this. And all we got to do is accept and believe in his son that he has come to do this for us, that he is our savior, that he is the God man that God sent for us. And stop depending on ourselves. Surrender, surrender. You know, one of the things that I found in my life is I struggled and I come to Christ at 21 years old. And, we, and we're salmon going against the, 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 the river, right? The whole world is going to hell. The whole world has got its own value system. It's own. This is what's awesome. This is what's cool. This is the best. And it's all anti-God. It's all going away from God. And we've become a Christian. And now we're, we find ourselves as salmon swimming against the stream. The stream says, go this way. And we say, no, the no road is upstream. We're headed toward God, not away from God. And so the resistance from the world, the flesh, and the devil is all against us. And it, it's hard. It's really hard. And, and so you, you remember who you were. You remember what was important to you. You remember what it was like to, to not have to fight the world. And, and there's a struggle within you. Who are you? Who are you? You know, are you the flesh that wants to go this way? Are you really different? And one of the, the keys that you have to come to in your Christian life, you have to embrace your new identity. That you are not that old man anymore. Scripture says that the old man 
was crucified with Christ, and he's uh, he's left in the grave. And in the inner man, you're brand new. You are, all things have become new. You are the new man on the inside, born again, the seed of Christ in you. And yet you're still in the shell of the body, so you have that that friction within your own self. But count that man to be dead and embrace the new identity of, of being a Christian, of being like Christ, of being the new man. And that's that's a key. You have to let go and, and learn to disdain and hate that old man and embrace the new thing that God is doing inside of you. And once you begin to do that, it's like the world is, I have nothing to do with the world. I'm not fighting the world anymore. The water just parts around me. So I, I don't feel the, the, the I'm not going to drown anymore. I have I have a, a vapor barrier around me, and I'm uh, part of that's my my retired status, I suppose. But embrace that newness. God has done a new thing in you. And you got you got to learn that. You got to learn who that is. You got to learn that and embrace it. You got to read the New Testament. You got to read the epistles. Paul talks about it. What this new man is. And then you begin to, to, to believe that and embrace that and identify with Jesus. And think about it. it's hard. Life is hard, but it gets easier as you do that. If, you, if you're a double-minded man and you're not sure who you are and what your commitment really is and what God has really done in your life, you're going to be pulled. You're going to be tossed and turned. You're going to have falls. And... But as you embrace that, as you accept that, life gets better. Life gets way better. So that's my word to to y'all. Uh, embrace Jesus. Embrace your identity in Christ. Uh, look look forward to what God has promised. This is not the only thing in life. We have a destiny, and He's going to accomplish it. So what can we do now while we're living to to prepare for that destiny? Uh, to begin to live into that destiny. Join heirs with Jesus Christ. We are called to so much more than this. So keep your eyes on that. Focus on that. Pursue that. Pursue life and godliness. Learn how to love. Learn God's plan on how he wants you to live. Okay? Uh, there's so much. God has got so much for us. Uh, yeah, that's my word today. Uh, 12 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, quick prayer. Father God, I just pray as we begin this new year that this would be the year, Jesus, you would come. I thank you, Lord, for the destiny. I pray for me and my listeners, Lord, you would open the, like Paul said, open the eyes of our heart that we might understand what is the depth and breadth of, of your love for us and what you intend to do for us. And help us lay aside, lay aside these earthly concerns and embrace our new identity in Jesus. Change us, Lord. Show yourself in us. Make us like you. Make us be like you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I lifted my wife. I touched her, Lord. She's sick. And I uh, appreciate any feedback y'all give me because it always means something to me. No mailbag today, but if you want to be in a mailbag, send me a mailbag question or a comment. All right. Uh, I guess that's all, folks. And this isn't going to work, but I'll try. That is all, folks. Please be all. All right. Look forward to some big improvements in the video. Peace. Love you guys.